you're talking, you're mentioning something that's really even more promising. Regenerative medicine is something that our body's hardwired to do. Okay, so let's talk about stem cells. Stem cells are cells that um, are capable of forming any part of you. Could be your eye, could be your fingernail, could be your hair, could be your toe, could be your heart, could be your kidney, any part of you. It could be your nerves, muscles, bones. And these stem cells started at the very beginning of our existence, meaning when your dad's sperm met your mom's egg, okay, and they wound up creating a little ball of cells, primitive cells. You didn't have a face, didn't have arms or legs, no spinal cord. These were all stem cells that formed. And as they developed, as you developed in your mom's womb, these cells, these stem cells started to take on the, a life of their own following instructions that of what they were supposed to do. So some stem cells said, you know, I'm going to become the eye. I'm going to become the jaw. I'm going to become the ear. And, and soon you actually had a face, uh, so on and so forth, that every single organ in the body. And when after nine months, uh, you know, pretty much we're all formed and we're ready to come out of the birth canal and be born and ready to meet the world. Guess what? Our mother nature figured out that it's better to have an excess of stem cells in developing the little human in the womb. And so she gave us about 70 million extra stem cells, more than we need, right? You don't want to have less than you need. You know, like you're, it's like painting a wall in your room and you don't buy, you, you buy, you don't buy enough paint and you're just about to finish the painting and you're missing an area uh, like that, that really, that's terrible, right? And like, oh man, I'm just done. My paint. So basically what uh, we have are 70 million extra stem cells. Most of them are, are um, so, some of them are trapped in the umbilical cord. So if you've heard of stem cell harvesting at childbirth, that's actually squeezing out some of those extra cells that be, that were us. But the rest of the cells that are trapped in the little baby's body, the infant's body, they hide, they go hide away like bees returning to their hive. Okay. They're in our bone marrow. They're in our body fat. They're in our skin. And these 70 million extra stem cells are basically our reservoir as we get older, when we're childhood, adult, young adulthood, middle age. And yes, even when we're elderly, these stem cells are called into action following their instructions whenever our body needs to be repaired and regenerated from the inside out. So some people say, well, look, I know that salamanders regenerate, and I know that um, starfish can regenerate. But there's no evidence that humans can regenerate. And in fact, uh, Richard, this is what I was taught in grade school by my teachers, right? We Humans cannot regenerate. Unfortunately, we don't regenerate. You can't grow a new arm like a starfish. Well, that's true. We can't grow a new arm. But I will tell you how we do know that we regenerate. Our hair grows back. It gets longer after a haircut. Or we pull out hair, it'll grow back. We know our skin grows back. If you've ever had dandruff, that skin that's shed and new skin is underneath, it's regenerating. It's even more profound than that. If you injure your nerves and you kill your nerves in your arm, for example, uh, your nerves will regenerate, grow back at one millimeter per day. It'll grow back amazingly, right? Which is why when you cut yourself, you know, you might have a little numbness around there, but eventually you'll restore sensation for the most part because the nerves regenerate. Now, your gut regenerates pretty much every day. But some of your big organs can regenerate. If I took the liver, which is the largest organ in your body, and remove two thirds of it, that one third that will left be that be left over the course of a few months to a year, the rest of the liver will regenerate, grow a new liver. If I cut off the tip of your lung, snip, all right, the tip of your lung will grow back. So our body's got the capability of regenerating. And what's exciting is that the foods that we eat can activate our stem cells, make more of them come out. And the reason this is important from a longevity perspective, from a vitality perspective, is because during aging, among many things that happen during aging, we get what's called stem cell exhaustion. Our, not only are the reservoirs depleted, you know, there's less, uh, there's less water in the well, so to speak, because it's been kicking out stem cells your whole life. So you got fewer stem cells, but the ones that are there are tired, exhausted. So there's two meanings to stem cell exhaustion. There's fewer stem cells as we get older into our 
you know, into our the second or third chapters of our life. And the ones that are there are not as vigorous. And so foods as medicines can revitalize and repopulate our stem cells, which is pretty cool. Yes. So the, I was I was going to talk about stem cell exhaustion, but but so there's two things. So what, one is that you have this reservoir, and the other thing is you want to mobilize them. Now, is it the same food that protects the reservoir, or and also causes the mobilization, or are they kind of different things? You know, we're figuring that out now. Is this is sort of early days? We already know that it works, but it's early days to figure out the mechanisms. I mean, the question you just ask. Is it mobilization? Is it uh, uh, protecting the reservoir? Is it filling up the reservoir? You've asked a, a scientist, scientific level question. This is the kind of stuff that uh, myself and my colleagues working in the research world, you know, we're 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 having a cup of coffee, uh, asking the questions, debating, designing experiments. So we don't know all the answers to this. And by the way, just so you know, uh, and for your for your listeners and viewers, uh, you know, when you're talking to a real scientist. And I'm a real scientist. When a person says they don't know everything, okay, it's the the real scientists very quickly confess what we don't know. We don't know the answer to you, what your question. We do know that some foods are really good at mobilization. A good example of that is dark chocolate. Now, dark mm -hmm. chocolate's a food that most people enjoy. Uh, you know, bring when I when I give this answer, when people say, "What's your favorite food that can mobilize stem cells?" And I tell them the most dramatic one that I know of is dark chocolate. They, it always brings a smile to their face, right? Because who would have thought that chocolate would be good for you in this particular way? But it turns out that um, dark chocolate, which has a lot of cacao, cacao being the plant-based element, like it's a seed pod that grows in the tropics, um, that there's natural substances, natural chemicals called proanthocyanidins, don't worry about the chemical name just know that it's been identified these when you expose them to stem cells it really causes the stem cell to act vigorously it's like giving the stem cell a workout okay um and when you actually feed humans dark chocolate um it actually mobilizes more stem cells into your bloodstream now the stem cells come into your bloodstream by coming out from your bone marrow and other um, reservoirs they fly out into your bloodstream like bees leaving, exiting in a hive. They buzz out, they're in your stem cells, they circulate all around where your blood goes. The amazing thing for stem cells is that they will only home into and fix the areas that need repair. If it's healthy, everything's good, everything's cool, they're not gonna actually land there. But just like bees are attracted to a particular flower, they're only gonna go to that flower. So stem cells are only gonna go to the areas of injury or repair to be able to regenerate that. So this is quite remarkable. Are there other, so can you give some other examples of foods which are, I guess, good for stem cells in terms of yeah, either okay. mobilization or? Okay, or, so chocolate yeah. mobilizes, black mm. tea also mobilizes uh, stem cells, as does green tea. So teas contain a natural substance, a polyphenol called catechins, one of them that has been best studied is called EGCG. It's, I'm going to say it so that people go, don't, don't say, oh, he didn't tell me what it is. It's epigallocatechin-3 gallate, EGCG. It's a polyphenol, all right? Um, and it's present in tea. And when you brew a nice cup of green tea or black tea or oolong tea or puer tea, doesn't matter the type of tea you have, and you sip it, you are drinking that essence that 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 that, that emanates from the tea leaf the polyphenols in the tea leaf it gets into the brew uh, at warm temperatures it gets at hot temperatures it gets into the water the tea water and then when you sip the tea you're consuming this polyphenol the polyphenol in the body acts to mobilize stem cells whether it's black tea or green tea and while i know that um asian cultures where tea originated will usually drink tea straight. I do know that in uh, uh, many parts of Europe, like in England, uh, people love to put uh, dairy like milk or cream into tea, you know, an English tea in the afternoon with your tea, a little bit of milk, black tea and milk. And here's the thing. We've also learned that when you use dairy milk in tea, 
dairy being um, fat, right? There's dairy fat in cream and milk that those fat bubbles in water, like tea water, form little mini, mini bubbles. You can't see the bubbles, but they are there. Under the microscope, you can see them. They're chemical bubbles. And those little bubbles trap the polyphenol, all right, uh, in tea. So when you put milk in tea you're tr and stir it around, you're forming little tiny bubbles, soap bubbles of the, of the milk fat, and it's trapping those polyphenols. So when you drink the tea, the soap bubbles roll down your gut so you're not absorbing as much of the polyphenol as you normally would. I would say you're probably missing out on 80% of the polyphenols from a cup of tea if you add milk in it. Now, this is true for dairy milk, but it's not true for nut milk. So soy milk, almond milk, all that kind of other kind of milk, those are fine. But the Asian way of drinking it is actually to get the full test. And if you really want to get like as much polyphenol, stem cell polyphenol as you possibly can, I recommend matcha tea because matcha isn't just a steeped tea where you know you put the tea leaves in a ball or you take loose leaf teas and let them settle to the bottom of the, of the cup. But matcha is the entire leaf ground up into a powder. So you get every bit of the polyphenol coming out into the matcha, the cup of matcha tea that you would drink. It's really potent. So tea is another a substance that's actually good for um, uh, 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 stem cells. Another one, by the way, is, um, well, well, I'm, I'm going to talk about multiple foods, but zeaxanthin and lutein are two compounds, two natural chemicals that are found in goji berries. Goji berries are sort of this um, Chinese medicine, herbal medicine type of thing. They're little tiny dried um, uh, ovoid looking things. They're sometimes found in Chinese teas, for example, um, but they're actually quite popular um, now as sort of a health um, uh, supplement or a health food to eat. You can find goji berries snacking on them in uh, different types of supermarkets that are, have a health oriented section. Lutein and zeaxanthin actually are um, present in goji berries and they mobilize your stem cells. They protect your stem cells and they mobilize them as well. So this is an example of two substances that go hand in hand in both. Now, why is that really remarkable? Because they've been shown to help protect vision as we age. So think about it. You want to do healthy aging, right? Mm -hmm. Among, in addition to the quantity of life you have, you want to have quality of life. And I would dare say that everyone would agree with me that if you want to have quality of life, you must have good vision. You can't be mm -hmm. blind. You know, if you're blind and you live to 180, you know, uh, that's not very fun. You're not going to, you know, you're going to be trying to figure out how to read Braille with ancient hands. That's not going to be a good time. And so what's interesting is zeaxanthin and lutein, which is found in goji berries, also found in red, uh, red bell peppers, um, uh, for example, um, uh, actually uh, protect your stem cells. And interestingly, they've been shown to preserve vision in elderly people. They're good for protecting you against the condition called age-related macular degeneration, or AMD, which is the most common cause of blindness in developed countries. So here's another example of stem cells, I think, doing their job in the retina, in the back of your eye, helping to preserve your vision. 